Now that we have become aware of this new 3D modeling method, and we have had the opportunity to produce and admire Gaussian splatting models, it is good time to reflect and instead of just spinning the model, look ahead and think about how and where we can actually use these splats at the moment. For what different purposes can Gaussian splatting models be used and how can they be utilized in practice? So let's draw a map. Hello boys and girls, it's Olli here again. Now it's been nine months since the first 3D Gaussian splatting research papers were presented. And I thought that this is another good time to summarize a little about the current services and applications and other stages of this development and how an ordinary user can currently benefit from this 3D technology. So I got inspired to build a kind of a process diagram or a roadmap on this topic. And since we are dealing with a very three-dimensional subject, I decided to draw it in 3D using the spline application. So let's see what I managed to accomplish with it. Alright, now that we already have some sort of understanding or idea of what Gaussian splatting means, and we may already have taken a bunch of pictures or videos of an object, and we want to make a 3D GS models out from it, we basically have two ways to produce them. We can use either web-based cloud services, which include the most popular Polycam and Luma AI services, but also Giri Engine or 3D Presso. This means that we upload images or videos, in other words, our 3D scan data, to one of these web services and let their server handle the calculation and training process. This is very easy and anyone can produce Gaussian models using either smartphone application or simply by transferring files through the service website. Another method is to render and train the Gaussian splatting models on your own computer. Programs with which this can be done are, for example, Indria's original GS source code, Nerf Studio or PostSat, which I often mentioned in my previous videos. Local training often requires a slightly more powerful PC with NVIDIA's RTX graphics card. The benefits of a local calculation is that you can better adjust the settings needed in training and get a better understanding of what is happening in the process. You don't have to hand over your images to the cloud and you can produce much more accurate models than what can be achieved with the default settings of the cloud service. But both methods have their advantages. For local training I have to highlight a smartphone app called Scaniverse. In their latest version you now have the option to generate Gaussian splatting models as well. Scaniverse has built a very wonderful live preview view, where you can see in real time directly from your phone screen how the splat model is formed when you scan the object. Splats become more accurate the more you move the camera and shoot your object from different angles. This is a very fascinating way to see how point clouds forms a Gaussian pattern. But what is particularly interesting here, and why I have included it in this part of my diagram, is that Scaniverse calculates the model directly on your smart device locally. It does not send the data outside for processing, but it really utilizes the current capabilities of the smart device and produces a 3D GS model directly on your phone. It produces first quite raw and sketchy looking Gaussian models, but you are able to enhance the result and give it another iteration round to train the Gaussians further and the model will get more accurate. Scaniverse is currently only available for iOS systems and therefore works best on the latest iPhones. 
But since it is still a very new feature, I noticed that, at least on my iPhone 15, creating models can be quite heavy task and even heat up the device. And with that, viewing the models can be also quite laggy and slow. But overall, this real-time splat generator is a really fun and cool scanner. And I recommend giving a Scanniverse a try. But now let's continue a look at the diagram. Whichever of these methods you choose to generate Gaussian splatting models, they all aim at the one key point, which is generating a PLY file. It is the most central and concrete part of the Gaussian models. Online services, as well as locally used application, can export this point cloud file. Once you have managed to export the PLY file, we can really start to observe what we can do with it and where it can be used. One route is to use it for web publishing. You can share and present your 3D Gaussian models either by sharing links or by using the embed possibilities and attach your 3D creation to websites. This can be accessed either directly from the cloud services you used at least through Luma AI and Polycam, you can easily share links to your Gaussian creations. But if you want to edit and take advantage of a versatile web publishing possibilities, the Spline service is currently a great and practical application to implement your own Gaussian splatting viewers, which you can then share over the internet with your friends and customers. Spline is an amazingly powerful and clever 3D tool that works in a web browser. And because it can also display Gaussian splatting models, you can build really interesting 3D publications with it. For example, I have been playing with the Spline recently, and I managed to build a promising looking game demo, where you can walk with the game character in a transparent room that uses my coast wall effect method, which I have presented in my previous videos. In Spline, it is really easy to build an interactive web experience like this and then share it as a link to social media or make it a web page embed. But speaking of games, we can move to the next category and it is exactly game engines. Current game engines such as Unity and Unreal can of course use Gaussian splatting models in games, but also in various visualizations. But what is very hot and interesting topic is what possibilities splat models can realize for virtual productions. Because 3D Gaussian splatting models are fairly quick and easy to produce, and are relatively lighter to use in a real-time game engine environment, they offer very potential new opportunities for virtual productions, where backgrounds are produced in studio conditions using either green screen or LED wall technology. Film and TV series productions are currently very interested in these methods, and the development around virtual production is quite huge and fast. Gaussian splatting models will certainly play a key role in future audiovisual productions. In connection with this, I also raised a virtual reality as a separate category in here. Gaussian splatting and VR has been one of the most interesting application targets since the beginning. There aren't that many practical examples for it yet, and even though VR features can already be used through game engines, the most important thing to mention is the Gracia application, which is currently the only VR program available where you can open PLY files directly and walk inside the models with the VR headset. Gracia works in the most common PC VR headsets, such as Oculus or Pico. There are obviously also new applications for the Apple's new Vision Pro device as well. Polycam and Giri Engine have already released their own native applications that works with Vision Pro spatial computing devices. Since I myself do not yet have experience using Vision Pro, I cannot say how well these applications actually work. But spatial computing is certainly one subfield 
that will benefit from the use of Gaussian models in the future. In addition to this, I want to place a few more individual applications on this map. One of them is SuperSplat. It is a simple and practical web editor where you can very quickly upload a PLY file and crop areas from the point cloud or clean out floating artifacts. When you have edited your Gaussian splatting model, you can download the edited file back to PLY format. SuperSplat is a fast and necessary basic tool that is needed in Gaussian toolbox. But then there is PostShot which I want to put on this map separately because I think its role is bigger than just a local Gaussian trainer. Bosat is developing at fast pace and its new version 0.3 offers the possibility to use, for example, the C-Depth channel, which not only looks cool but also offers the possibility to use flat models now with visual effects. And with that, PostSort is centrally connected to Adobe After Effects. Here, the CTEP channel helps you to insert and mix 3D or 2D elements inside Gaussian splatting models. Or you can even use it to create camera depth of field effect. In addition to these great features, a setting has now been added to the PostSort that allows you to control transparency of the splats. And through this you can now more easily achieve the ghost wall effect I talked about earlier. In fact, I'm very pleased and honored that this my discovery has been included in this program and is also mentioned in the rendering section of the version release. Coast wall effect is a fascinating feature that I think brings new artistic dimension to Gaussian splatting. Well, this is how the map looks like now. It is meant to describe what a regular user or enthusiast like myself can do with the Gaussian splatting model at the time this video is published. But I know there is a huge amount of new research beyond that, so maybe I should add one more ring somewhere in here. Cornell University maintains the archive.org publication online, which lists, for example, computer science research articles. From this huge database, Korean robotics researcher Jeon Lee has collected and listed all the papers related to Gaussian splatting. And according to it, there are currently a total of 250 individual development and research works in the field of Gaussian splatting technology. And there are also a large number of individual software developers who plan to use Gaussian point clouds around existing production programs such as Houdini, Blender or other 3D programs. However, all of these are still mostly out of reach of the average user. Some of the source codes are available in GitHub, but if you are not an actual coder or software developer, it is quite difficult to start use them, and the learning curve of many new applications is simply so steep that it is not yet possible to use them properly. But as can we see from all this, the future is going to be very diverse and amazing in the field of Gaussian splatting. I can promise you that. Alright, I hope this map drawing helped you to understand where we are going at the moment. And by the way, if you want to look at it and study how it's done, I'll post it in the Spline community page. I will also leave a link to the description of it. And I will also add links to the Ghost Wall web experiences, which I presented in this video, so you can test them yourself. I hope they are inspiring. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I will continue to float in the world of splats. Until the next time, goodbye.